In this chapter, we will work with non-destructive editing. Non-destructive editing is an excellent feature of Photoshop, which allows you to make changes to images without altering or damaging the original. We'll also work with layers so that we can organize our content. Let's get started so you can see what I mean. In this lesson, we're going to use one of Photoshop's automate features to create an image that we'll work with. So let's click on the file menu on the application bar. Let's point to automate and let's select photo merge. We're going to browse the files we're going to use. So we're going to go to chapter three and I'd like you to select merge one, two, and three and bring them into the photo merge dialog box. For some reason, my shift key isn't letting me select these all at once, but you could select merge one, hold down your shift key and then click on merge three to select them all at one time. Okay, I've got my three images. I'm gonna leave Photo Merge dialog box at its default settings. So I'm gonna leave Auto there at the top left. And at the bottom, I'm gonna leave Blend Images Together checked. I'm gonna click OK. And now Photoshop is gonna work its magic and it's going to bring these three images together and stitch them to make a panoramic picture. So this can be used when you're taking a picture of something that you don't want to get so far away that you lose the detail of the subject that you're taking a picture of and you want to stay close up enough to get a good picture you simply need to take the picture as many times as you need to be able to get enough images together so that when Photoshop sees them it can figure out how to stitch them together for you and you want to overlap parts of your image so that Photoshop can actually stitch it so here we see Photoshop has brought these three pictures in. It's created three layers on the layers panel on the right hand side of our screen. And the layers are named after those images that we had selected, merge one, two, and three. You'll see that there's a little thumbnail on the right hand side that's black and white. This is called a layer mask. Photoshop has made a layer mask for us automatically for each of these images. And if I click on the visibility icon, which is the little eyeball, and I hide the various pictures, you can see what Photoshop had to do to actually stitch these together. And you can see it kind of looks like a jigsaw puzzle or a piece of paper that's ripped and been put together. So a layer mask here on the right is linked to each picture. If I right click, I can disable the layer mask and you'll see, let me hide these other two layers, you'll see that the picture has not been damaged. Let me go to the next one. It's fully intact and a layer mask has been placed on the image to hide the portion that Photoshop does not want you to see so that you can create a stitched image. Using a layer mask is a form of non-destructive editing, which Photoshop is very well known for. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually merge these layers into one so that we can work with it. Right now, if it's on three separate layers, we'd have to work with each individual portion of that picture separately, and that can get kind of complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Layers panel menu here on the right-hand side. Every panel has a panel menu. We're going to click on that, and we're going to choose Merge Visible. Choosing Merge Visible takes our three images and compresses it down into one layer so all three parts are now on one layer and you'll see that it kept the name of the top layer let's go ahead and click on our layer where the name is I'm going to double click and we're going to rename this Stonehenge now obviously this isn't really Stonehenge this is a picture I took up in the Texas Hill Country here near San Antonio where they have a bunch of different replications of monuments from around the world Okay, so we've renamed our layer Stonehenge by simply double clicking on the name. You can rename it. Naming your layers helps keep with organization. You'll notice that our picture shows a little bit of the canvas that is transparent because parts of the image are higher on one side and lower on the other to be able to get this picture together. Obviously, when I took the picture, I didn't have a tripod and I was freehanding taking the picture. And just by taking an overlap of the different sections of this image, Photoshop was able to stitch it together for me. I've turned on my ruler so that you can see how big this picture is. To get your ruler, you can click on the View menu and choose Rulers. The check mark tells us it's active, or press Control R. That's Command R on the Mac. And you can see this is a huge image. It's 46 inches by 15 inches approximately. And this is obviously going to be too big to work with, but we'll worry about the size later. Right now what we want to do is crop our image. We want to get rid of the extraneous parts of it that we actually don't need. 
we're going to take this picture into another image later and combine the two of them. So over here on our tools panel, we're going to select the crop tool. And on our options panel, we're actually going to plug in the size of the crop that we want to create. So I'm going to type in 41 inches or 41 IN for my width. And I'm going to put in 8.5 IN inches for my height. Let me click off 8.5 to make sure it's taken it. Now you can see I have a grid that's been created for me that I can now adjust my picture around and decide what portion I want it to be put into. By default, Photoshop has taken my measurements and put it in the center of the image. We're going to leave the view menu at rule of thirds, which is our default. That's one of the methods used for creating image composition. And since we're using a specific measurement, we're not going to worry about that right now. And we'll talk about rule of thirds and our other options in a later chapter. Okay, so we've got our image cropped. We chose 41 inches by 8.5 inches. And you'll notice here on the top right, we've got our check mark or our not sign. So again, we have to make a commitment to Photoshop or we have to change our mind before we can go any further. So we can press our return key or our enter key. And now our image is cropped. And you can see we're still with the crop tool. So I'm going to press my letter V to call up my move tool again. And we'll go ahead and leave this image open for our next lesson.